This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were eight hundred years, and he begat sons and daughters. The synagogue of Satan took the anointed writings from the various books of the Apocrypha and other sealed scriptures the people of the Most High has written to preserve their culture as well as how to serve the Most High to create religion and the authorized version of the Bible. Israelites, the Bible, the workers of iniquity in the beast culture made available to us is an authorized version. The authorized version is not the original. The original scriptures are visions and dreams, as well as the life journey of our ancestors. These scriptures were written by the prophets who had these visions, as well as other people the Most High selected to preserve his words. In certain verses in the Bible, the authors would often say the Most High command them to write down what they saw. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Israelites, did you notice the scripture said in Deuteronomy that the Most High would raise a prophet from among your people to put his words into his mouth? The anointed individual will speak what the Most High command of him. The Most High never said he would select someone who is not of your people to speak through. The headship to every faith in religion in the beast system is the other species of mankind. The Pope, the people the world selected as the chosen people, the leader to the Jewish people, the Messiah, and the powerful leaders of this world are from the other species of mankind. None of these people in high places are your people. Israelites, you must know that not all flesh is the same. You have been conditioned to believe all flesh are the same. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another remember just because they look human it doesn't mean they are the messiah the world accepted and worship doesn't look like you but resemble the other species of mankind this is a major red flag that should make you question the concept of religion the most High said he would select from among your brethren to speak through how come many Israelites and indigenous black people are looking to the other species of mankind for spiritual guidance? The other species of mankind do not produce the kind of fruits the Most High desire. In addition to the Most High choosing from among your people, the Most High said, never place a stranger as king over yourselves. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose, one from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. The other species of mankind refuse to worship and serve gods that do not look like them. They don't submit nor allow themselves to be guided by spiritual leaders that do not look like them. The other species of mankind created the abominable graven image of the Messiah that resembled themselves to worship. They refused to paint the image and likeness of the real Messiah because the true Messiah do not look like them. Nobody should be bowing down nor worshiping graven images in the first place. If religion was of the Most High and the head leaders of religion served the Most High, they would not be circulating a false graven image that is deceiving the people. 
Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of any thing that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. The indigenous black people are the only people that will worship and serve gods that do not look like them. Israelites, it is important to know that the Most High will speak and select from your own people to guide you and the scriptures confirm. I am glad that only the Most High can interpret dreams and visions. The Most High will select from among your people and give that individual the ability to interpret visions and dreams. With the scriptures being sealed and written in parables, as well as dreams and visions, the workers of iniquity cannot decode the message unless the Most High give them the interpretation. Israelites, that is how the scripture is being fulfilled that said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. The Most High is transferring the truth of his words from generation to generation by raising prophets and teachers from among his people to preserve his words. The synagogue of Satan tried to redirect the people of the Most High with the lies they inserted into the scriptures. Despite the alterations and manipulations of the scriptures, the Most High can show his anointed the same visions he gave to the prophets of old, as well as the interpretation to find the truth. The synagogue of Satan thought they were clever when they inserted themselves into the scriptures and painted their images and likeness into the book of the law. And laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. Daniel was an anointed prophet whom the Most High gave many visions and dreams concerning the end times. When King Nebuchadnezzar had multiple dreams that made his spirit unrest, he asked the wise men to tell him about his dreams. He could not recall his dreams. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted the wise men and all the workers of iniquity who use familiar spirits and divination to not only interpret his dreams, but to reveal his dreams back to him. The wise men and enchanters said they couldn't do that. He had to tell them the dream first, then they would interpret the dream. Their failure to do as the king desired angered King Nebuchadnezzar. He decreed to put to death all the wise men. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, Ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if ye show the dream, and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream, and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. Israelites, I share this example with you to show you only the Most High can reveal the dreams and visions to whomever he choose. The kingdom of darkness used familiar spirits and sorcery to decode the scriptures. The Bible said only the spirit of the Most High know the thoughts of the Most High. This is why you cannot look to the people who do not know the Most High to find truth. The spirit of the Most High is not with them. With the synagogue of Satan altering the scriptures, it doesn't stop the word of the Most High from doing what he sent it to do. Despite of Daniel being righteous, he could not interpret the dream nor recall the dream unless the Most High reveal it to him. Daniel had to seek the Most High in prayer to show him the dreams as well as the interpretation of the dreams to save his life. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time, and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house, 
and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Bless be the name of God for ever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Israelites, do not let Satan deceive you into believing his lies. The word of the Most High is truth. You will know the truth if you allow the Most High to reveal it to you. The spirit of truth, as well as the spirit of the Most High, will guide you into all truth. The Bibles that are made available to us may be the authorized version. However, with the spirit of the Most High guiding us, the sealed scriptures can be decoded. Today, there are many Israelites and the other species of mankind trying to decode the scriptures without the Holy Spirit. They rely on the carnal mind, the flesh, to decode what is spiritual. In the process of them trying to accomplish what only the Most High can make happen, they've created many doctrines of devils to satisfy their flesh. By doing this, they are reaping corruption. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Israelites, do not allow the doctrines of devils mislead you in the awakening, as well as create division and hate in your heart. Guard your hearts. Too many Israelites are slandering our ancestors as if they are without sin. The scripture said, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Most High. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Some Israelites and indigenous black people forget that they have to give an account for every word they say. The affairs of the Most High is not a game or to be taken lightly. Slandering Adam and Eve as well as other people to make yourself appear to be righteous, in addition to shift blame, is not going to earn you a ticket into the kingdom of the Most High. Playing the victim is not going to relieve you from your role as a man and woman. The Most High command his people to honor their mother and father if you want everything to go well for you. Not too many are following the commands of the Most High of honoring their elders. They rather create outrageous doctrines, slandering them instead of seeking mercy for their own sins. The wicked among us today make sure to diligently follow the laws and statutes of the beast system and ignore the laws of the Most High. The remnant will see to it that they honor the commands of the Most High. The remnant will not allow the spirit of hate and division to misguide them at this hour. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You don't have to be born of Satan to be his child. Anyone who sinned and followed the ways of this world is the children of the devil, regardless of you tracing your bloodline to Adam. Cain is a prime example of being born of Adam and Eve. Because of his hard heart and sin, Satan became a father to him as well as his descendants. Adam and Eve's children were beguiled by Satan just like their parents were. The Most High showed them mercy after they repent, just as the Most High gave this generation grace and mercy after repentance. The book of Adam and Eve not only give us the behind the scene narrative of what took place, but it revealed to us how Satan operates. The root to all evil that is committed in this world, Satan is the father of it all. He that committeth sin is of the devil, but the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. The Most High taught me a valuable lesson about the negative view I had towards our ancestors because of their wicked ways. Before the Most High revealed my heritage to me, I believed Judah was a bad person because of his wicked ways. The Most High showed me I wasn't any different from him since I descend from him. In the word of our Messiah, any one of you who speaks slanderous words and doctrines that is without sin, cast the first stone. 
So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. I suggest the people of the Most High start to humble themselves, like the scripture said, repent, take up your cross, and follow the Most High. Israelites, do not let the wicked in this generation speak for you, nor teach you about the Most High. You have the ability to go to the Most High directly and establish your own personal relationship with him. Seth is the third son born to Adam and Eve. After Cain slew his brother Abel, Adam and Eve grieved over Abel for a period of time. Before Eve conceived with Seth, they prayed and asked the Most High to give them another son like Abel. But as for Adam and Eve, they came not together after Abel's funeral for seven years. After this, however, Eve conceived, and while she was with child, Adam said to her, Come, let us take an offering and offer it up unto God, and ask him to give us a fair child, in whom we may find comfort, and whom we may join in marriage to Abel's sister. Then they prepared an offering and brought it up to the altar and offered it before the Lord and began to entreat him to accept their offering and to give them a good offspring. The Most High heard Adam and Eve's prayer and blessed them with Seth. And God heard Adam and accepted his offering. Then they worshipped Adam, Eve, and their daughter, and came down to the cave of treasures and placed a lamp in it to burn by night and by day before the body of Abel. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. The Bible said Seth was made in the image and likeness of Adam. Israelites, just because the scripture said Seth was made in the image of Adam, this does not conclude his other children were not made in his image and likeness as well. And Eve brought forth a son, perfectly beautiful in figure and in countenance. His beauty was like that of his father, Adam, yet more beautiful. But when Adam came and saw the child's good looks, his beauty, and his perfect figure, he rejoiced over him and was comforted for Abel. Then he named the child Seth. That means that God has heard my prayer and has delivered me out of my affliction. But it means also power and strength. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. When the scriptures said Seth was made in the image and likeness of his father Adam, the scripture is simply saying Seth had the same love of serving and worshiping the Most High like Adam his father and brother Abel. There are some people who say Cain is the son of Satan because the scripture said Cain was of the wicked one. Cain did not have the same passion in his heart for the affairs of the Most High like Adam and his brother Abel and Seth did. His ways resemble Satan. That is why the scripture said he was of the wicked one. There are people in this generation who have children that do not look like them and did not inherit their ways. There are righteous people who give birth to wicked people. If you continue to listen to this message, you will soon understand why the Most High had to start over and send the flood. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers righteous. Remember, Satan doesn't have to be your biological father to be your father. If you follow him and sin rule your life, he's your father. Just like if you follow the Most High and uphold his statutes and commandments, you become the children of the Most High. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Like Adam, Eve, Abel, and Cain, Satan tempted Seth to deceive him as well. The book of Adam and Eve said Seth believed the words of Satan when he came to tempt him in the form of an angel. Because Seth respected and honored his mother and father, in addition, his parents were overprotected of him due to Cain murdering his brother Abel, Seth replied to Satan and said he would have to consult with his mother and father, 
if Adam and Eve gave him permission to go with him, then he would follow him to the world Satan said was better than the holy mountain. Satan took on the likeness of an angel to try to gain Seth trust. The scriptures did say Satan transformed himself into an angel of light. After that, as he was coming down from the altar, having ended his offerings, Satan appeared unto him in the form of a beautiful angel, brilliant with light, with a staff of light in his hand, himself girth with a girdle of light. He greeted Seth with a beautiful smile and began to beguile him with fair words, saying to him, O Seth, why abidest thou in this mountain? For it is rough, full of stones and of sand and of trees with no good fruits on them, a wilderness without habitations and without towns, no good place to dwell in, but all is heat, weariness and trouble. He said further, but we dwell in beautiful places in another world than this earth. Our world is one of light and our condition is of the best. Our women are handsomer than any others and I wish thee, O Seth, to wed one of them because I see that thou art fair to look upon and in this land there is not one woman good enough for thee. Besides, all those who live in this world are only five souls. But Seth said to him, Thy speech has amazed me and thy beautiful description of it all. Yet I cannot go with thee today, not until I have gone to my father Adam and to my mother Eve, and told them all thou hast said to me. Then if they give me leave to go with thee, I will come. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. No one is exempt from the temptations from the kingdom of darkness. Israelites, know that the Most High is not the one who tempts you. Do not mistake temptations from the kingdom of darkness for the most high testing you. The scripture said the most high tempts no one. Satan's mission is to destroy the seed of Adam and all who love and follow the most high. Israelites, when you are tempted, you must pray to the most high to deliver you. But Seth, when he saw how he kept on talking and that he would not leave him, ran and went up to the altar and spread his hands unto God and sought deliverance from him. Then God sent his word and cursed Satan who fled from him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. But God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Throughout the book of Adam and Eve, you can see how Satan took on the form of the holy angels, a woman, a man, and animals to deceive Adam and his family. There were many occasions Adam was deceived, as well as Eve and their children. The Most High is merciful towards Adam. He delivered Adam and his family from Satan's deceptions multiple times. Now, therefore, O Adam, understanding thy heart, I have delivered thee many a time from his hands in order to show thee that I am a merciful God and that I wish thy good and that I do not wish thy ruin. The scriptures said Seth served the Most High. He prayed and fasted continuously. His heart was pure before the Most High. The scriptures went on to say he prayed and fasted more than his father did. Seth was committed to the Most High. As for Seth, when he was seven years old, he knew good and evil and was consistent in fasting and praying and spent all his nights in entreating God for mercy and forgiveness. He also fasted when bringing up his offerings every day, more than his father did, for he was of a fair countenance like unto an angel of God. He also had a good heart preserved the finest qualities of his soul. And for this reason, he brought up his offering every day. And God was pleased with his offerings, but he was also pleased with his purity. And he continued thus in doing the will of God and of his father and mother until he was seven years old. Israelites, it is important for you to guard your heart. If your heart is pure before the Most High, he's pleased with you. Do not let your heart become filled with hate division, and all things evil. Too many Israelites and indigenous black people are allowing the kingdom of darkness to harden their hearts. Seth married his sister, Aklia. Aklia was Abel's twin sister. 
So Adam said to his son, Seth, I wish, O my son, that thou wed thy sister Aklia, Abel's sister, that she may bear thee children who shall replenish the earth according to God's promise to us. Seth's firstborn son was Enos. Seth's descendants multiply and dwell on the holy mountain close to the Garden of Eden. Seth's children served the Most High and the Most High was pleased with them. Seth was the head of his family. He led his family to serve the Most High with meekness. He did not allow his children to intermingle with Cain's children. Because of Seth's great leadership and his children honoring his instructions to serve the Most High, Seth's children were named children of God. And Seth the elder, tall and good, with a fine soul and of a strong mind, stood at the head of his people and tended them in innocency, penitence, and meekness, and did not allow one of them to go down to Cain's children. But because of their own purity, they were named children of God, and they were with God, instead of the host of angels who fell. For they continue in praises to God and in singing psalms unto him in their cave, the cave of treasures. Seth's children gave themselves to do the will of the Most High. There were no jealousy and hatred among them. They were innocent and happy people. Seth's children served the Most High all his days. Before his death, Seth gathered his children just as Adam did before he transitioned. Seth commanded his children to serve the Most High all their days. He told them to stay away from Cain's children. He made his eldest son Enos his replacement as the head of the family. Then Seth prayed over them and blessed them and adjured them by the blood of Abel the just, saying, I beg of you, my children, not to let one of you go down from this holy and pure mountain. Make no fellowship with the children of Cain, the murderer and the sinner who killed his brother. For ye know, O my children, that we flee from him and from all his sin with all our might because he killed his brother Abel. After having said this, Seth blessed Enos, his firstborn son, and commended him habitually to minister in purity before the body of our father Adam all the days of his life, then also to go at times to the altar which he, Seth, had built. And he commanded him to feed his people in righteousness in judgment and purity all the days of his life. Every time the head of the family transitioned, they would follow the same tradition of gathering everyone to be blessed and appoint the next head to lead the family in righteousness. The Most High kept the children of Cain and the children of Seth separated. Cain and his descendants dwell at the bottom of the mountain. They could not go to the top of the holy mountain to where Seth's children lived. Cain's descendants lived in sin. They multiply quickly because they engage in fornication. Seth's children were committed to serving the Most High that they took the place of the angels who had fallen. Meanwhile, the children of Seth who were on the holy mountain prayed and praised God in the place of the host of angels who had fallen, wherefore God had called them angels because he rejoiced over them greatly. Cain's children are known as the sinners, the doers of unrighteousness. There is a doctrine about the curse the Most High placed on Cain. Most people believe the curse changed his appearance. That is false. The curse the Most High placed on him was fear and terror. He couldn't find rest anywhere he goes. He became a wanderer. The Bible said a vagabond. Meanwhile, Cain, ever since God had cast him off and had cursed him with trembling and terror, could neither settle nor find rest in any one place, but wandered from place to place. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. We all must remember that we are in a battle between good and evil, righteousness against unrighteousness. Satan will tempt and persecute whomever to destroy the seed of Adam and to take control of this world. The Israelites and indigenous black people must wise up to Satan's plans and equip themselves with the armor of the Most High to withstand the devil. Seth's descendants honor and serve the Most High until Jared became the leader of his people. The Most High prophesied to Adam about the flood and what would happen to his people long before it took place. 
Mahalalel revealed to Jared his son about the flood and how the children of Seth would be led astray in his generation. He then kissed his face and said to him, O Jared, my son, I adjure thee by him who had made heaven and earth to watch over thy people and to feed them in righteousness and in innocency and not to let one of them go down from this holy mountain to the children of Cain, lest he perish with them. But I also know that thy children will not hearken unto thee, and that they will go down from this mountain and hold intercourse with the children of Cain, and that they shall perish with them. O my son, teach them and watch over them, that no guilt attach to thee on their account. Jared himself was led astray by Satan until he prayed and the Most High delivered him. Satan used Cain's children to lure the children of Seth into sin. Cain's children would tempt them with music, clothing, and all sorts of abominations to get them to join them. Cain's children did this for a year until the children of Seth began to be led astray. But after this, they no longer kept his commandment, nor held by the promise he had made to their fathers, but they relaxed from their fasting and praying and from the counsel of Jared, their father. And they kept on gathering together on the top of the mountain to look upon the children of Cain from morning until evening and upon what they did, upon their beautiful dresses and ornaments. Then the children of Cain looked up from below and saw the children of Seth standing in troops on top of the mountain, and they called to them to come down to them. Seth's descendants began to go down from the holy mountain to join the children of Cain. Satan deceived them to the point that they no longer listened to Jared. Seth's descendants wanted to enjoy themselves with the children of Cain. Jared said to them, if you leave the holy mountain, you cannot come back. The children of Seth did not listen to Jared. They all went down from the holy mountain to join the children of Cain in their abominations. Satan filled the heart of the children of Seth with lust, as well as the daughters of Cain with lust. The Most High became angry with the children of Seth. And God was angry with them and repented of them because they had come down from glory and had thereby lost or forsaken their own purity or innocency and were fallen into the defilement of sin. The children of Seth were led astray with Satan's many temptations, using the children of Cain to lure them into the lust of the flesh. During this time, the earth was filled with sin and violence. Israelites, another significant event took place during the time of Jared. It was during this time the watchers took an oath to procreate with the daughters of men. It was during this time the infiltration took place that created the seed of the fallen. The children of Seth, as well as the children of Cain, engaged in the abominations. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred, who descend in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they call it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. The children of Seth were close to the Most High. They were like angels. They had great leadership and they kept the statutes and commandments of the Most High. With all the wisdom and understanding they had, despite of their righteous upbringing, Satan managed to deceive them and separated them from the Most High. Seth's children made a conscious decision to join the children of Cain in sin. Israelites, I hope the story of the children of Seth opened your eyes to show you that the decisions you make comes with major consequences. The children of Seth, despite of all the warning, made the decision to leave the presence of the Most High to become one with the kingdom of darkness. The downfall of the children of Seth and the increase of sin and violence on the earth caused the Most High to send the flood. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. 
to the people who like to make certain characters in the scriptures appear to be innocent and place the total blame on one person, self descendants, who many of you are, made the decision to join the children of Cain in sin. It was their decision that caused many to perish in the flood. I've seen comments from some people saying Adam was not deceived, it was Eve. Adam made the decision to eat. None of you are victims or innocent. You have to make the conscious decision to live a set-apart life. That is what Noah, Lamech, Methuselah, and Enoch did. They were the only ones who did not leave the holy mountain to join the children of Cain in sin. Altogether, not one of our fathers or of their children remain on that holy mountain except those three, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. For all the rest went down from the mountain and fell into sin with the children of Cain. Therefore were they forbidden that mountain, and none remain on it but those three men. Israelites, I hope the decisions you are making today bring you closer to the Most High. At this point, it doesn't matter who sinned that led to our captivity. It's our turn as the people of the Most High to make the decisions to uphold righteousness all the days of our lives. Satan is the enemy. A lot of Israelites are misled to believe flesh and blood is the enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers with the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There are many Israelites that have been deceived by Satan's lies that they blame other people for their wickedness. They've become aggressive towards their own people. They value leadership and spiritual guidance from the children of the wicked one. Satan's current agenda to destroy the indigenous black family through division and hate is taking root in the heart of many. Some indigenous black people are looking for refuge and love in the arms of the very people who are oppressing them and assisting Satan in leading them astray. The root to all your troubles come from the kingdom of darkness. This generation is not exempt from the kingdom of darkness. You must repent from the sins of our fathers and repent from your own sins. Do not let the God of this world blind your eyes that you cannot see your own iniquities. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Israelites, when you read the stories about our ancestors in the scriptures, the intent is to help you learn from their mistakes. The Most High made sure his words never pass away so that every generation gain the opportunity to know his words and not perish from a lack of knowledge. Do not let Satan deceive you into believing he doesn't exist and that he doesn't persecute the people in this generation. He's your adversary and he will sift you, especially if you love the Most High and want to do the will of the Most High. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Seth maintained his pure heart throughout his life. His descendants did also until they went astray by following the wicked among them and Satan orchestrating their downfall behind the scenes. Seth's descendants before the flood allowed Satan to deceive them into accepting the ways of this world. Israelites, you are Seth's descendants after the flood. Do not become a casualty like our ancestors who allowed the lust of the flesh to control them. Israelites, now is the time for you to make a conscious decision to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, just like Seth commanded his children before he transitioned. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man.